We are in Windows Server 2012. I'm going to show you how to create a SAN certificate request that allows you to use multiple host and domain names. Now in Microsoft Exchange, it allows you to do this fairly easily. It's built into the management console. But when you have to not use Exchange, when you're used to using a web server such as a remote desktop server using the RD web tied back to maybe an ERP solution or something else that just requires you to have multiple names in the certificate, then it's a little trickier on how to get this going. So we're going to right click on our start button and we're going to type in MMC as you see there for Microsoft Management Console. And from here we need to add a snap in so we can do some work. So let's go ahead and click on file, add remove snap in and choose certificates. Now we're going to choose the computer account instead of the user account because we want this to be effective for everyone and click next and go ahead and choose the local computer and finish. Now we'll go ahead and click OK. You don't have to have anything special installed on your server. It could just be any server with any roles on it or no roles on it. And it still has the MMC built into it. Now let's go to the personal section and we'll right click and we'll choose all tasks and choose advanced options and we're going to create a custom request and the reason for that is because if you create a regular request it's just going to create a simple certificate and that's not going to help us let's go ahead and click next and we're going to choose the proceed without enrollment policy option and click next and we're going to change from a CNG key to a legacy key. It makes it a little bit more compatible and gives us additional options that we want later on. Leave the PKCS as it is and click Next. Now we're going to choose the custom request. Now if you accidentally clicked Next, you're going to have to start all over again because there is no back key. So click the drop down where it says Details and choose Properties. Now we're going to make some changes for the properties. So we're going to call this particular one web.clickvideos.org. So given it the .org name means it's a public name. And we're just going to type in this is for our web server. Now before you click to the next tab, which is going to be the subject tab, we're going to want to click apply. And the reason for that is because one of the bugs in this particular product is if you switch between tabs without saving your changes, then your changes many times gets lost. So now we'll click on subject and we'll leave full DN in there. And we're going to put in CN equals and we're going to choose that same name that we had before or a new name, whichever you want. And we're going to click Add. Now that's just the first part of this particular certificate. We need to add more things besides that. So let's see what else we need to add in here. We need to put in the company name. And this would be your actual company name. And it needs to be a real company name that can be looked up on the internet if you're going to have a public certificate authority be able to uh, authorize and authenticate you. So let's go ahead and put in a real company. But in this case, it's not. And we'll just go ahead and click Add. And then we need to put the department. We're just going to put in IT, even though it says O. Oh, that's typically where you put the department. And the next thing we can put in, if we want to, if we have one, we can put in P.O. Box equals. But we don't actually have a P.O. Box in this case. So we want to put the street name. Now, if you have multiple streets or multiple parts of your address that requires more than one line, then you just put in street multiple times. So the first line will be street, one, two, three, main, street. And we'll click Add. And then we'll put street again equals and we'll do something like suite 100. Now if you don't have that and just can you can fit everything on one line then just go ahead and do it. All right the next thing we want to do is put in L equals and strangely enough L equals the city that we're in. So we'll just go ahead and put in a city and click add and we'll put in S for state and we're going to put in OR for Oregon. And then we're going to put in postal code equals. And I'm just going to put in a fake postal code and click Add. 
And now you're going to put in C, and that's for country. So you're going to do a two-digit country code, and in our case, it's going to be US. So you should know your own country code. If not, you shouldn't be doing this. So then we have email, and email is optional. A lot of these are optional, but if you don't have enough information, then the public authority will not be able to authenticate you. So you can put in an email if you want. Uh, you can just put in uh, admin at whatever your video, or pardon me, whatever your uh, domain is. In our case, we're just going to leave it blank. And if you want, you can also put in your phone number. So phone equals, and we can put in blah, 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 like that. All right, so we'll go ahead and just leave what we have. You don't have to have a phone number in there in order to get it to be authenticated or an email, but the rest of the information is good to have in there. Now, before we click anything, we want to go down to the next section, and we want to put in the type to be DNS, or Domain Name Service. And that will have to also be a public name. Now, if your name ends in .internal or .local, then there is no public authority that will set up your certificate anymore. That is over. It turned out to be a security risk, so they stopped doing it. So what you want to do is put in another name that would uh, be in there. Now, it can be another .com domain. So we could put in test.widget.com. There we go. We can put in a .NET name. We can put in web.widgetllc.net. Whatever it is, as long as they're public names, and these are names you're going to use. And you can see here that they're not all the same domain name. They're, they're different domain names. And that's part of what a SAN certificate offers you. It allows you to use multiple domain names. So if you want to put in the name of a server, of an internal server, such as, let's say, DC1 for domain controller, and you put in widget dot local that's just not going to work you will not get it uh, authenticated so you can do one of two things you can either set up a second active directory domain name just for this which would be a huge hassle but you could and call it dot com you do have to own that particular dot com otherwise that won't work either so that's one thing that you can do is set up another active directory domain or you can just go ahead and register your public name and not create an Active Directory name and put in the server name again, dot com name with it. So the only downside to that is that when a user goes to open up a web browser external to your company, they will get a certificate error saying that not all the domain names are matching or are, can be authenticated. But uh, that's okay. You can go ahead and tell, tell your users that they're going to get that error if that's okay with you. If it's not okay, then you can't use it. So go ahead and click Add. So now we can see we have three different domain names on top of our click videos domain name as well. So all these different domain names, if I own them, I can now put into a single certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply before I go to my next tab, which is going to be extensions. So now when I go to extensions, I need to make a couple of changes. And the first one is going to be the extended key usage. And we're going to go to Client Authentication and click Add. And then, of course, once again, we're going to click Apply just to be on the safe side. And we're going to make one other change. And that is going to be on the Private Key tab. So we're going to go to the Private Key, go to Key Options, and we're going to do a minimum of 4096. And you could do 2048. You could do 1024. 1024, it's hard to get past anybody now. Most browsers won't accept it. And I'm sure 2048 will soon be outdated as well. So do at least a 4096 key. And we're going to check the box of Make the Private Key Exportable because we may need to do that in order to uh, set, send this particular uh, key around to other servers. Now, we also want to expand the key type, so click the drop down on that and change that from signature to exchange because we are going to be exchanging the certificate back and forth between servers. This has nothing to do with Microsoft Exchange email server. This is just exchanging the keys. And we'll go ahead and click Apply. All right, now we'll go ahead and click OK, and we'll click Next, and we'll put our file on our desktop just to make it easy to find. And we'll just call it CSR for the certificate request. Go ahead and click Save and Finish. Now we can minimize, 
and we can look at our CSR. So here is our key. We open that up with Notepad, and boy, that is big type, but that's okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to do Control A and then Control C, or just copy and select all and copy. And then we're going to open up a particular website, and that website's going to tell us whether or not there's any errors in our certificate request. So it's going to be uh, really handy to have that kind of information. So the name of the site is going to be secure.komodo.net forward slash utilities forward slash decode csr.html. So if you want to pause the video and write that down, you certainly can. So we've copied our text from our CSR and we're going to head, go ahead and paste that text in. And once we do that, we can click on decode. But before we decode that, let's go ahead and check the boxes for showing certain things such as the SAN DNS names. Make sure that those are set up the way we want them to be. And if there's anything else in here that you want, you can go ahead and check the box there. Like I want to make sure the key size is right. If it's any less than 4096, I would definitely want to know about it. All right, let's go ahead and click decode and take a look there and make sure that we don't see any errors in this particular uh, decode error uh, um, decode area now the first thing that you see is we see it doesn't like the unsupported key size and that's because this website is a little bit outdated so 4096 is perfectly fine you can ignore that particular error the rest of these things we just want to go ahead and double check make sure everything is as we want it and we see uh, the keys oh the key size there is 1024 so for some reason it did not save my 4096 key size so i was wrong about it being outdated if for some reason that did not save so i'm going to go back again and i'm going to have to recreate it i'm going to have to make sure that that 4096 does stick all right and now we see our dns names and we make sure that all of those names are spelled exactly the way we want them now once you have this the way you want you can go ahead and take this code and you can copy it and paste it into any particular site where you'd like to purchase the certificate. Now Komodo is one of them. Uh, they tend to be uh, a little bit difficult to deal with in my opinion so I like to use DigiCert but there's GoDaddy as well. Uh, although GoDaddy does not allow you to rekey the, the certificate in case you made a mistake without charging you uh, whereas DigiCert does not. So there's several different things out there. I have not found that uh, Network Solutions has this so you won't be able to go there unless they add that service at some point. But that is how you create the CSR request for a SAN certificate in Windows Server 2012 R2.